Oh, so it's, it's actually six years, kind of. All right, I'm late. Okay. Hey everyone, it's Victor here, and today I am back to watch an old video of mine. A video I made five years ago. Well, five years ago and a bit, because it was made in August 2017. This video in particular is called, Where Will I Be in Five Years? I'd completely forgotten that I had made this video. I'm now going to rewatch it five years older than I was when I made it. Without further ado, I think we should react to this because I just want to go down a nostalgia trip, really, and see how much I have succeeded in doing. Anyway, let's begin. I had pink hair. Age-old question. God, my oh voice. yes, yes. Just this morning, I asked myself, why do people yawn? Why? It's curious. I mean, sometimes we aren't even tired. We just open our mouths, take all this air in, and no, no, not that one. I meant. Oh yes, yes. Sorry, yes. In fact, I have asked myself why bees can fly. Just last week, sitting in this very chair, I thought they're rotund little bodies are grossly oversized for their minuscule wings. It's truly incredible that they could know. I like I've got oh. pink hair and drinking pink tea. Oh. oh, why is the sky blue? No. Oh, right, yes. Will the car ever really replace the horse? No. Why? And then I got a Pizza Hut ad. What? No, it's not even Pizza Hut, it's Domino's. That's even worse. Right in the middle of my skit. Right in the middle of my skit? Really? Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? No. Why is the rum gone? No. <laughs> These references. Where do you see yourself in five years? Algernon. I'm I love how they called myself Algernon. <laughs> Not Victor. Where do I see myself in five years? It's a very good question. Hey, very good question. So we're now into the main video. So that was the skit. I'm sorry I talked all the way through it. So now I'm going to interrupt myself as much as possible as I talk about what I'm doing in five years time. Oh my god, I'm small. My hair's pink. Wow. To here. And today we're going to muse over where I see myself in five years. I've seen other people do these kind of videos and I really wanted to do mine because I thought it would be funny just to kind of think about where I see myself and how it contrasts to where I'm actually going to be. I have a long- The audio is horrific. If this audio is any better, I will have done something at least in the last five years, but my audio back then was crunchy. Horrifically crunchy. I don't even know how I lived. Uh, anyway, audio aside, what am I gonna say? I have a long-term plan that I might make five year in the future me watch this back in five years, because I think it would be really funny to... Funny? Freaky? Weird? Existential? Yes! Funny! I I'm not sure about funny. I think funny strange. I don't even recognise myself in these videos. In fact, I'm sure that you don't recognise me either. If you do, it's probably hitting you with nostalgia, but people who have just recently started watching me are probably like, who is this guy? So, okay. Compare about what my ridiculous ideas were and what the actual reality was. It's kind of a odd question though, because there's so many things you could go over. There's so many things that could change in five years. I think I might start in terms of my transition, because that's something that's very in the forefront of my mind. Priority has always been the priority, talking about my transition. I've documented my entire transition, if you want to watch it, we'll put it in a card somewhere. Currently, and I think it will be interesting. That was so weird. We both did that with our hair at the same time. I know we're the same person, but this in five years in the past, and, and we did that at the same time. 
probably keep watching. To see how far I've come in five years. At the moment, I'm pre-testosterone, um, pre-top surgery. I'm sure most of you know that I am a trans guy, but I'll just go over that again. I'm a trans guy. I'm pre-everything. Okay, so you've got that. So, I'll be starting testosterone at the end of this year. So in five years' time, effectively, I will have been five years on testosterone. I can't believe it has passed that quickly. Uh, what? It's insane. I remember looking forward to that day so much, and to think that I'm now here in my transition in comparison to then is, is mind-blowing. Um, I'm so grateful. I will never, ever take it for granted. Um, it is the most joyous thing in the world to finally be who you are. And I, I am. I am very comfortable and happy in who I am. And to look back at myself here is actually quite like emotional in a way. I mean, I know I'm being silly about it, but it is, it's quite touching, you know? That I have a little bit of facial hair, maybe. I've always liked the idea of growing a little bit of facial hair, even though I know that cosplay will restrict me. Okay, facial hair. <laughs> Not really. Uh, I have very, very good neck and chin beard. My mustache does not grow through at all, so I shave every day. Uh, I try to maintain my clean-shavenness. Um, it's not something I really... I realised I didn't really want facial hair as I transitioned, and that's something that can change, is the things you want from your transition, and that's perfectly okay. So, yeah, facial hair... No, I don't have the moustache I thought I would have five years on, uh, but I'm not bothered. I actually... I want to be clean-shaven. It's more... I, that, I prefer that aesthetic, really, uh, being clean-shaven. So... Yeah, my facial hair opinions changed. Because I need to be able to play lots of different characters. So, at least hoping I have the ability to grow facial hair. That would be nice. I hope I like my voice. I'm sure in five years time, obviously it will have settled to what it will be forever. And I hope it's something that I like. It's, I hope it's something that I am proud of. And I also hope it's- I am. Love my voice. Just said I'm happy with who I am. I do love my voice. Um. I, I like to do audiobooks and talk in videos and, you know, I wouldn't say I, I'm someone that, like, adores the sound of my own voice, but I, I my voice is validates me and that's all I could ask for, really. It's given me more confidence to do things that I love, like maybe voice acting and acting in general, just expressing myself more because I'm confident in who I am. That's... Yeah, in terms of, yeah, I, I have done more uh, voice acting and audio, like I said, audiobooks and things like that. I've not done as much physical acting, but um, I've done a few things and it's something that in future I want to do more of. So I suppose I have the ability to do that and feel more validated in who I am, but it's not necessarily something I have really pursued. Um, but we'll see. That's something I really, really want to happen. <laughs> soon, actually. I mean, it will be soon, but, you know, five years I hope I've been doing that for a while and I actually feel most like myself. That's that's my um my hope. I hope I'm a bit more muscly by that time. I'm really really skinny and it's something that makes me you know feel a bit weird. I, I feel like I'm just very thin. So I'd like to have a bit more mass to me. Not too much, just a little bit. Just a little bit so I don't feel so like I don't know, I just feel really delicate and I don't like feeling delicate I mean I'm, I'm okay so the whole being skinny feeling delicate thing I am definitely I have more muscle than I used to back then and you can see the change in my face and my neck and and just my general appearance um I'd like to be more muscular but it's not something I focus on so much that it makes me feel like shit about myself uh but I I do I do sometimes feel delicate and I do feel dysphoria from it but I I'm trying to embrace it and realize that it doesn't need to invalidate my masculinity. And my masculinity can be my own. Um, and it's... I can't change my body, I can't change my hand size or the height or my shoe size. Um, so it's going it's going to be something that I am embracing. Uh, so I do feel differently about it now. I'm a dandy, but I don't want to feel like someone could push me over. So I want to have a bit of, you know, something keeping me standing up. Because at the moment I look like a pencil. Well, obviously I hope to have had top surgery by then. Maybe I'm thinking about bottom surgery, I don't know, because that's something that I'm not sure whether I'm going to have it, like, as soon as I can, or if I'm going to wait a bit, because it's such a big process, and it's a lot of healing. And because I'm young, relatively, um, well, I'll be 23 in November, um, 
I feel like I really need to get my career going, get my life sorted, and then when I'm at a stage where I feel settled, which may be five years from now, I might consider bottom surgery because it is something that is important to me and important to my self-confidence and who I am and just stuff in general. So, okay, the whole bottom surgery discussion. I mean, okay, anyone who doesn't want to know about genitalia stuff, uh, skip. I'll put a little time frame that you can skip to. So, no, I don't want it. I don't. I've made the decision not to because I would never want to be in the position where I felt like part of my body could not function. That's my decision. Um, I, I honestly uh, validate anyone who has any opinion on a uh, bottom surgery. I think it's not something that people should choose for you. Uh, I, I think if you want it or you don't, you're perfectly valid. But it's something that I could not willingly go through in terms of the process of it. If I could snap my fingers and it would all be done and everything would work and it would be like, like I was cis, then um, yeah, I would, I would go for it. But the process, the pain, the healing, it's not something I, I want to go through. And I am in a happy relationship with someone who accepts me for who I am. And I, they have made me feel good about my body. And I have healed really in terms of that. So I feel validated in my, um, my body in that way. So that's good, I suppose. So that is something I might be considering in five years or maybe maybe I've already done it who knows I hope I've got a house to myself um that would be really nice uh I mean maybe moved in with who knows who can tell oh my god okay I, I'm 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 gonna cut that a bit out because it mentions a, a past relationship that um I don't really want to talk about so I talk about wanting to well maybe I'm living with the person I was with at the time no, we're not. Definitely not. I'm living with my glorious fiance, uh, Teddy, and we do have a place of our own. Uh, it, we don't own it outright, but we have a place which we can lock the door, and we have cats, and we have a little kitchen, and a bathroom, and a bedroom, and it's a little house. So yeah, we do have a... I do, I do live in, in a place independently. That is a thing I've done. So yeah, I hope uh, I have a house myself. I hope I'm financially independent. That would be lovely, because I'm not at the moment. I'm trying my best to to get that going. But um Financial independence I mean that's a spectrum, but I'm definitely better off than I was, and I do have an apprenticeship which is a wage, uh, and I earn money in other ways. So yes, I am much I'm much better off than I was then. I I earned nothing then. I just earned YouTube pennies. Nothing, basically. So, yeah, I am better off. Um, yeah, I think in terms of career as well, I would love to do more acting and more making films, bigger films, bigger productions, not just on YouTube, just actual films. That's always been my dream, is to work in the film industry. And I hope that I have more of my foot in the door in that sort of sense of things. I would absolutely love that, to be more involved in the film industry. So I hope in five years, I'm somewhere in the film industry. I really hope I am, because that's always been my dream, and that's my goal. I'm working towards that all the time. Um. Film industry situation, um, I focused more on my apprenticeship in hairdressing um, for the past couple of years, so that has taken a, a, a definite back seat in my life. But it is something that continues to be a driving force and a passion that is within me that I want to express. Um, not so much the acting side in terms of physical acting. I'd love to do voice acting, but I'm more interested in the production and directing side um, and writing stories and to put into film. Um, and I, I do actually have a novel of sorts, a short a short story, I suppose you'd say. I've, I have multiple stories in the, in the mix, but I actually have finished a story, um, just a couple of chapters, uh, which I'm hoping to make into an audiobook. Uh, but also eventually into a film. So I'm working on it in the background, but it's sadly not something I, I mean, I don't really want fame and fortune. I just want to express myself creatively. So in terms of that, I, I, I'm still going forward with it, but I am not on the red carpet and accepting BAFTAs. Uh, but I'm not bothered if I, if I don't ever do that because I do it for the love of it. So kind of, I'm still, I still love it. I'm still doing it. So I guess that counts. So, Yes, in the film industry. That would be amazing. I hope I have a place for my horses. I hope I have a kind of like 
farm, small holding place where I can keep animals and everything because animals are very important to me. And so I still, I hope I have a nice family of animals keeping me company as well. Um, that would be lovely. Family of animals, my horse, uh, who I still have, she is uh, back at my family's place and she is getting very well, well looked after and I go back as often as I can um, to take care of her and contribute to her well-being um, but it's something I had to move away from due to personal reasons. I have three cats and I have two giant African land snails so um, I suppose I do have animals surrounding me but I don't have a small holding on a farm. Oh my god, I'm so, I'm so ambitious. I've always been so ambitious and full of, like, in five years I thought, like, me earning nothing was just gonna somehow have a farm in five years. I mean, I, I still always say that one day I'll, I'll have everything I've ever wanted. Um, but to be fair, I, I already kind of do because I feel very content in, in my life because I have Teddy and because I have my health and my safety. Um, so maybe my priorities have changed slightly, but I, I... I would like to be around horses more because it's a massive part of my life but sadly it's just not possible in this in this time but it will be one day so yeah I haven't got a farm though I hope I'm still cosplaying even if it's less than usual less than now I hope I'm still cosplaying and I hope maybe people have invited me to conventions maybe I'm a guest at things like that. I don't know. Maybe that could happen. That would be pretty damn cool. And I hope I'm still cosplaying. I hope I can cosplay all my dream characters that I've always wanted to. Um, but I'm, I suppose they will keep on growing constantly. I suppose my dream characters will change over time and everything. So yeah, um, I hope. I am still cosplaying very occasionally um, in limited fandoms. I definitely am not really cosplaying from the dreaded double B anymore. Not as much. I, I mean, occasionally I will do it for my best friend. Um, but I am very put off that fandom because of the sheer amount of pressure and guilt and overall entitlement um, of the fandom. Yeah, it, it, I got put off. Um, doing that but I am still cosplaying and I still have a love for it but I'm doing it much more on my own terms and for my own enjoyment so I suppose I am really my hair might be longer because I'm growing my hair out um as you can see it's pink I forgot to mention that although people that follow me on Instagram already know that it's pink um but uh I, I might be keeping pink for a while because I absolutely love it um it's very gender affirming for me in some weird way because you think like oh pink would make you feel more feminine but no like it makes me feel super masculine and like I'm so happy with it so yeah pink hair I wonder what color hair I'll have then I wonder what my hair will look like hmm well it's shoulder length and blonde um I I like to have it a little bit on the short side I did try to grow it out I grew it out to around here um and it got really in the way, it was hard to maintain, I got misgendered a lot and it was something that made me feel quite uncomfortable but I have it around here and I have it in a, in a sort of more masculine cut where it's like short bits of the front that kind of like go down almost like in a mullety shape um, and I might even be getting a trim in the next couple of days uh, to maintain this because it grows so quickly so I prefer it shoulder length and a little bit above um, just a bit, a bit to swoosh around you know I like, I like some hair to swoosh uh, but uh, yeah, and I want to stay blonde for a while, but I don't I might not be blonde forever I just like being blonde. I like being like being um Lestat-esque at the moment. So that's the mood of the moment. So yeah pink hair pink hair is interesting It was a bit of a phase for me, but I can't imagine having pink hair now, but I'm much more I Feel like maybe I've just grown out of that somehow. I don't know, but I'm glad I enjoyed it back then uh, I think I'll still be living in Scotland But again, who knows? I'd like to continue living in Scotland because I love it here. I am currently living in England. Kind of against my will. I don't want to live in England, but at the moment it's the only option and it's wh while I finish my apprenticeship, but I do want to move back to Scotland as soon as possible. Uh, I don't need to go into it, obviously, politically, everything else, uh, but my family live there and a lot of my friends live there and I just love it. I, I love Scotland and I just prefer it and I was born there. So I want to move back to Scotland ASAP. But at the moment, I'm living in England, so yeah. Funny, really. Also that I'm working with horses more, maybe working with other people's horses and helping them with them, because 
Horsemanship is something that I absolutely love, but I haven't really done videos on it. And I want to in the future, but it's hard to kind of put them together because a lot of the time I'm working with a horse and then I can't really frame all the stuff. And, you know, Jay isn't really interested in horses, so it's kind of hard for him to help and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to do more horsemanship and hopefully I'm, you know, helping people with horses. I mean, maybe that might be one of my jobs that I'm doing at the time is helping people with horses because I love that. It's honestly amazing. It's just connection with horses is something that's so special to me. It's still special to me. I don't have time to do it at the moment, but I'm going to tell you a funny story, okay? I applied for a uh, show jumping yard to be an apprentice, uh, to be a groom. Which is basically, you know, the, the person that looks after the horses, that gets them ready, that cleans their tack, that, you know, loads them and unloads them. You're more responsible for the horse um, and getting it ready for the competitor. Uh, I was rejected um, horribly, in fact. I won't name the yard, I won't name the people, but, you know, you can sit and boil in your own judgmental pudding for all I care. I basically applied very enthusiastically. I have years of experience with horses. I've been riding since I was nine. I've worked with X racers. I've worked with uh, damaged horses. I have worked with like all different kinds of horses. I have a lot of practical experience. I have no British Horse Association qualifications or anything like that, but I went to Pony Club, I did all those things. So apprenticeships are meant to give you a start in these things, okay? You're not really meant to have um, competitive yard experience or anything like that and that's not something I necessarily had experience in but obviously I have experience in many other things for horses so I, I didn't think it was an issue but basically the woman on the phone said you know competition horses are in another league to riding school horses this woman didn't know how old I was I could have been 16 and she basically said ha peasant get lost and they were all advertising for like giving young people an opportunity to enter into this world and help us and get a career in equestrianism. And literally it was just like You're such a peasant. You've had how many years of experience with horses? And you've worked with X-Racers and competition horses in, in rescue yards? Mm, no, that's not good enough. What were they wanting? What has a 16-year-old got in their experience that I haven't got? And I, I lost it. So I did try to get an apprenticeship in the equestrian world, but they're a load of bigots. And uh, honestly, the equestrian world is filled. Not all of them, obviously. That goes without saying. But horsey people can be the bitchiest people in the whole world. So uh, yeah, avoiding that world like the plague. Funnily enough, hairdressing isn't so bad. Um, I don't know if I'll have any tattoos. I've half thought about tattoos, but who knows? I may have some tattoos. I may not. I may still be a blank canvas. I've always treated myself like a blank canvas. I've never really thought about tattoos for ages. And then I've been like, maybe I could get something. I've been thinking about getting an eye on my ankle, like Count Olaf. Uh, so that's the one I've been considering for a while. But, um, you can't bloody see I don't it. Know. Maybe you can't bloody see. see it. Who knows? But anyway, I think I've covered most things. Yes, I do have an eye on my ankle. You can't see it. I've got fluffy slippers on. Don't judge. I have dagger here, cathedral here, and another and 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 one and 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 a bat on the other ankle. So yes, I do. I have I have many more tattoos than I thought I was ever going to have. I did. I was scared to get tattoos because of my so-called acting career, because I thought people wouldn't hire me. So, uh, but I've I've given up on that dream now. So I couldn't give a if they hire me or not. I just wanted tattoos because I like art on my body. So yes, I do have tattoos. In five years, yeah, I think like house, more gender reassigned in general, animals, career, all kicking off. So yeah, I think kicking off. I think that's everything. It's hard to remember everything on the spot. I hope that's where I am in five years. But anyway, I'm sure future me will tell me if I'm wrong or not. Yes. So that will be fun. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you very soon. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I have thoughts on this. Before my thoughts, there's a blooper reel, guys. There's a blooper reel and I didn't know about it. I, I forgot that I had a blooper reel. So let's play the blooper reel and I will react to it. Hopefully not verbally so I don't interrupt it. Mm -hmm.
Oh, oh yes, sorry, yes. Well, I have asked myself if bee, <laughs> if bees can fly, we know they can fly. I'm having to boil some tea for myself because I have to do everything around here because I don't actually have a butler in real life. I wish I did. That'd be nice. Hey. Oh, oh yes, yes, sorry. Well, yes, I have in fact asked myself why bees can fly. I forgot my line. <laughs> okay. Ooh. This chair is very uncomfortable. Oh, right. Will the horse... No, wrong way around. This is dripping all over me. Help! I say, old fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I say, old fellow. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Look at me floof. Even better. I think I need to rebubble my pipe. <laughs> my pipe is successfully rebubbled. Um, and I think it's time for me to continue. Uh, I can remember my lines. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever you asked yourself that age-old question? I know I have. <laughs> right. Same facial expressions. <laughs> Quite a lot of breath. <sighs> Goes down smooth, eh? <laughs> oh my god! What is wrong with me? Oh my god, that... Uh, okay, that... that I was funnier five years ago. I don't know what's happened. I think my... My naive, innocent, happy little brain is, is gone. Um... I hope I'm still funny. That's something I hope for. I hope I've not lost my funny. Also, this facial tracking, I'm so sorry. Throughout this video, it has been... I've got, like, autofocus, like, facial tracking on, on, um... This camera, uh, and... I'm not used to it. And I don't think it's used to my face and my constant... Because that's all I do. So I'm very sorry. I will fix... I, I might just forget about the facial tracking next time. And just have a... Uh, fixed focus point um, instead because I am sure that's very irritating for you to watch. So my final thoughts. Just can't get over how, uh, how how much I made myself laugh. That's probably very sad. I'm pleased uh, with how much I've managed to achieve in five years. Obviously, they are different things. They aren't the same level of like, oh, I have a farm and I'm a famous deviant movie actor. Yeah, not quite at that level, but again, I, I've always had big ambitions and that's not something I ever want to stop having. I just think sometimes our life changes and our priorities change and that's why it's such an interesting thing to have a, a five-year gap in between, you know, uh, making almost like resolutions and I suppose it's a great time to do it at the beginning of the new year. Thinking about what we actually want in life and five years seems like such a long period of time. I never thought I'd get to this point where I was five years on from that moment. I, I think it was almost like a pipe, a pipe dream. A bubble pipe dream. I wish I had a bubble pipe. I so would have sat with it. I remember I, I, I fantasized so much about being like an old man with a mustache and a pipe. Uh, that's not something I fantasize as much, but I think back then I was so kind of far from my goals in my transition that I kind of wanted to over-characterize, almost in a kind of drag king way, uh, my masculinity. And it's not something I do as much anymore, but I think that's because I'm so content in my masculinity. So I don't feel like I need to put on the big mustache and have the pipe and go, oh, bear, 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 uh, to feel validated. Um, but it's definitely something I did more when I was pre-transition, pre pre my voice breaking and things like that because it made me feel more validated it made me feel more masculine when I felt so lacking in masculinity which isn't the case really it's just how I felt inside I'm in a better position in life in general I think um, in terms of in the direction I'm, I'm going and also the fact that I'm in a stable relationship back then I was in a really awful relationship yeah I, I've come really far in five years 
I know it might not seem like a lot to some people. They may, maybe they're like, oh, you don't, you don't have a farm, and you're not a famous TV movie actor. What are you playing at? But I realize that the things that make me happy aren't necessarily big, mind-blowing. Like my name in lights, big, is what I meant to kind of say. But that doesn't mean happiness. In fact, a lot of the time, it's the opposite of it. Fame and, and fortune and all these things. It doesn't exactly breed uh, atmosphere of contentment. It breeds an atmosphere of wanting more and more and things never being enough. So I'm grateful for where I am. Um, and I'm also grateful for past me for sticking through it. And we had a few close calls, but we're still here and we're still kicking. And yeah, that was really interesting. Let me know what you thought. Let me know how weird it was for you to watch that because it was weird for me. Was it, is it just me that it was weird for? Or was it weird for you guys too? I'm pleased that past me made that video. It gave me the excuse to look back and realize that time does go on, things change, not necessarily in the way that you think they're going to change, but they change. And we do mature and we find peace and we go through bad times and come through them again and, and go through good times in life. The best thing you can do is embrace the moment and just roll with it, run with it. Do whatever you can to feel this, this happiness in this moment, no matter where you are. And I feel, I feel like I'm doing that pretty well. I feel like I'm doing pretty well on that, on that front. In terms of the future, I mentioned my writing and my filmmaking is something I do want to focus on, but obviously I do have so many other responsibilities. Obviously I now have a place of my own and I've got bills to pay and animals to provide for, snails to buy salad for, which is, of course is a massive responsibility. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see where I can go with my filmmaking and, and with my writing and my creative pursuits. But at the moment I'm trying to finish my apprenticeship, focus on that and who knows? Who knows what this year will bring? I'm not going to predict anything. I'm not going to make any fixed in stone resolutions, but I feel good. But anyway, for now, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very soon. So, where do you think we'll be five years from now? Hmm? Seriously? That's probably a load of rubbish anyway. <laughs>